Hey, what's going on, music producers? Welcome back to the Patreon. And today we're covering a really fun audio engineering topic, MS processing. Now, what is MS processing? Well, it stands for mid-side processing. And this question has been popping up with a lot of the Ableton people that follow my stuff, uh, particularly because Ableton 12.1 did a big update, including their limiter. So if you're used to mastering your own music, you know, making it commercially loud, uh, this has a bunch of new features on it. And a lot of people are looking at left, right, and MS. You can see there on the bottom. MS basically stands for mid-side processing. And in this video, we're gonna quickly cover how to do it with an EQ, how to do it with a limiter. And we're also gonna put some presets down below you can download just to get started on this right away. It's a fantastic technique for buses. So if you have a bunch of guitars or a bunch of harmonized vocals or just on the master bus, itself this is a great technique so let's check it out so the way that mid side works is basically you have a stereo field you have a stereo recording and mid side will interpret that as the things that fall in the middle channel think of typical instruments like your kick your snare maybe your lead vocals your bass those things are typically in the center right and then it will interpret the things that are on, so on the sides, which is the differences between the left and right stereo signal. So you think of the things that, you know, could be the different timbres of your guitars and the timbre of like the upper frequency of the snare hitting the reverb, all the things that appear on the sides of your headphones, right? So mid-side is very simple. Think about the things that are in the middle, like the kick, the snare, the mid-range of your guitars all together, anything that's kind of center balanced, your bass, and then think of the things on the sides. And what we typically do, this is new for us on the Patreon, but now I'm doing fab filter presets because a lot of people use fab filter and have requested them. Um, if you're familiar with fab filter, you know that you have a dynamic EQ. So this EQ can move with the music. And what we have here is a very typical kind of setup to sort of enhance your master um, using the typical things that you want to do when you're mid-side processing. So what we're going to do is take a listen. Um, if you're on very loud volume right now, be careful. This is not going to be a huge jump in volume, but it is mastered. So it's at commercial volume level. And we're going to take a look at this EQ and link down below are, or is this fab filter preset and also the um, equivalent if you're using EQ8. Although on EQ8 in Ableton, you don't have a dynamic EQ setting yet. So this will be static compared to the fab filter version, but both of those will be linked down below. So now let's take a listen and see what we've got. We're gonna start with this off and take a listen to what the music sounds like. We'll run through the frequencies, we'll turn this on and we'll talk about what it does. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so there's our instrumental mix. Now let's turn on the mid-side EQ, take a listen, and then go through the different frequencies. Now you'll probably notice that there is a clarity boost that's typically happening when you do mid-side EQ. And it's for a couple of logical reasons you can see right in front of you. I'm gonna play the mix now and isolate these different frequencies. The blue line represents the side channel and the green line represents the middle channel. Let's go through the mid channel first because that's where a big difference is gonna, you're gonna really be able to feel it. If I isolate this frequency here, You could probably hear that that's basically where the kick lives in the overall mix. It's sort of the thump and the punch of that kick drum. By enhancing it and having it dynamically set this way, it's gonna let that kick jump out more. So if you listen really closely to the kick, you'll notice that when this is off, it's not hitting as hard. So here it is with the EQ, the midside EQ off. Right when I turned it on, the kick got a little more thumpy. Here, we'll do it again with it off, and then watch this cursor when it turns on. Mm -hmm. 
Another example is in the mid-range. If I isolate the mid-range here, you can hear what instruments are kind of living in this middle, middle of the frequency and middle channel. So a lot of the bulky mid-range of the guitars, which are playing on the lower strings, right? And also the snare drum. By scooping this area dynamically as well, it's going to kind of promote, promote clarity. I did a previous video about mid-side EQ that's very similar to this. Um, and that, you know, tends to go in that direction of clarity. And um, a lot of times when you're using an EQ, you're going for more clarity, right? I actually did a, a video recently about vocal EQ. And a lot of times it's controlling the mid-range or scooping the mid-range or cleaning up the mid-range um, to promote more clarity. And uh, this is a more subtle preset, but that's because it's for when you're mastering. You're not trying to like completely change the essence of your mix. You're just trying to enhance. And um, if we look at the blue line now, you can see there's three specific moves. None of these are dynamic, by the way. So this will work fine with the Ableton EQ8 approximate kind of equivalent preset, which is you can download down below. So even if you don't own Fab Filter, uh, you can absolutely try this technique for yourself. Now, when we listen to the side channel, you can see I'm doing this cut or this, you know, low shelf for the sides. Okay, what does that mean? Well, this is all stuff below 90 hertz, you guys, or 100 hertz. This is this is like bass stuff that's on the sides of your headphones or the so left, right of your speakers. So if we know that we're going to have our bass guitar and our kick drum in the center of our mix, do we really need all of this bass, all this rumble on the sides? Not really. We actually want to focus our, our stereo field and enhance it. So maybe we want to, you know, shelf those things or, or move that emphasis of the low end of the frequencies to the middle, the kick and the snare, right? And the bass. And then on the sides, clean up the bass. That's what we're doing. If I isolate this and we listen... Now, some of you may be listening on bassy headphones or a uh, subwoofer speaker on your setup. You'll probably hear this more, but it's a lot of just rumble on the sides of your speakers, right? Not exactly th something that you really need <laughs> in your master, right? You don't need a bunch of useless frequencies in, in essence, right? So that's the argument. So we cut there. And then if we go over to all the way on the other side here with the side uh, channels, let's take a listen over here. Okay, so more of the upper end of the snare, the upper end of the guitars, the crunchy guitars, right? Uh, the cymbal lives there, right? A lot of stuff is really important that lives in the upper end of the mid-range. If this is more the middle slash low end of the mid-range, you got the upper mid-range with these lines over here. You know, 3,000 hertz is a great spot. Things can be a little bit harsh around four to 5,000 hertz sometimes, but 3,000 hertz is a, is a generally nice spot. Um, it all depends, right? But that's kind of where you're at. You're in the upper mid range up here and we're just giving it a boost on the sides. That's going to enhance the stereo field of like what you're hearing. Some of you may be watching this video on headphones and you'll hear those differences as well. Now, if we turn this off and we isolate that area. Turn it on. Just a simple half a dB boost. So it gets a little brighter on the sides of your headphones. And of course, we could go nuts with this. We could turn it all the way up. And if it's off, this is what it sounds like. On. So you're boosting the sound of those upper mid-range frequencies on the side channels. So that really helps... And then, of course, we have the just upper frequencies, which is like arguably 10,000 hertz and above. And you know, here you can hear those high frequencies of the snare drum, the cymbals, right? All the air in your mix. We're enhancing it pretty aggressively on the sides only. So, what this is going to do overall is it's going to clean up the bass and enhance sort of the higher frequencies on the sides of your, of your, of your stereo field. And uh, yeah, it's great to test this out with headphones. Link down below is a version of this for Fab Filter Pro Q3 and for 
uh, Ableton EQ8. So you can try this out on your mixes and you could also throw a preset like this onto any other kind of like heavily stereo, um, you know, something that's got a lot of left, right information on it. Like maybe you have a bunch of guitars on a guitar bus or, you know, a group track, they call it an Ableton, or you have, you know, 20, you know, vocal harmonies in a big, you know, and they're all panned in different directions and stuff. And you have a bus of that. This can just help clean things up a little bit and enhance the stereo field. And uh, it's just great on your master bus too, because it's going to do something. It's going to clean up the mids, clean up the lows, enhance the side high frequencies. And uh, it's generally a pretty friendly preset too. It's nothing too drastic. But it does make your music 5% better, you know, which is kind of what you're trying to do on a master, especially. You're not trying to change the whole thing. Um, that's for mixing, right? So a uh, really cool little preset. And I know a lot of you guys have been requesting me to do fab filter content for a little while now. So I'm happy to start making presets and talking about it in these videos. If you have any questions at all, you guys are pro members. So you've got the DM access, take advantage of it, ask questions. If you want me to do content about fab filter pro C2 or the reverb with fab filter, I'd be happy to do it and even make presets for you guys. If you feel like that helps you. So thank you guys so much for your support. It means so much to me. Uh, really excited to keep making content for you guys and hopefully you found this video informative and useful. Check out the downloads down below and as always have fun making music.